Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to speak at the rerun event. Uh, so yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Robert Carter. I'm a Muslim convert uh, and a journalist working for the British Muslim News website Five Pillars. Uh, and uh, coincidentally, I began work with Five Pillars full time uh, in October. So since then, of course, uh, a lot's been at stake and the work we've been doing has been pretty flat out. Uh, one of the things which uh, I think is important for me to mention today is that uh, in my opinion, and obviously I suspect you were all uh, expecting a historical discussion today, but I think I'm going to focus on the fact that right now, as of today, in the day that we live in, Islam is under attack. Muslims are under attack. And I'm not just talking about the obvious example in Gaza where they face a genocide. I'm talking about here now with us in the Western world. Our very freedoms of speech, our very freedoms to practice the religion which we love more than ourselves is literally under attack. What do I mean by that? There are efforts being made by political forces in this country to essentially criminalize key aspects of Islam which cannot be separated from the religion itself. Concepts like Sharia, Jihad, and others are literally being spoken about in government, in political circles, in the mainstream media, as if they are somehow barbaric backwards and even deserving of being outlawed in this country. A prime example, about 24 hours ago, the leader of a right-wing political party, Reform UK, actually said on GB News, that laws should be implemented that outlaw Sharia and anyone practicing Sharia in this country. Now, I'm not going to claim that uh, I believe his name is Richard Tice knows anything about Islam, knows anything about what he's talking about. He's clearly probably just peddling right wing dog whistle talking points in order to further his own selfish political agenda because obviously his party feeds on hate and division. But the fact of the matter is that Sharia is Islam. Sharia is what? It's everything that we do. Everything. The controversial stuff that Westerners don't like and the less controversial stuff, praying, fasting. This is Islam they are attacking. Our religion. And who are they to lecture us, to lecture you, about what's right and wrong, when they in Westminster won't even do the bare minimum to call for a ceasefire while there's a damn genocide taking place. A damn genocide taking place. Kids are being killed in huge numbers every, every day. I'm trying not to use bad language. The fact of the matter is that we live in a country who feels fit, who feels that it's right and feels that they are capable of lecturing us about what's right and wrong, about human rights, about what we should and shouldn't believe in. They talk down to Muslims I see every day on the media, in government, in the headlines, as if you guys are somehow in the wrong. Well, Islam is a perfect religion. We don't have this problem of genociding Jews. That's a European problem. Every hundred years or so, it pops up again and again. Has it been a problem in the Muslim world? No. Where did the Jews go when they were slaughtered in Europe, in Germany and elsewhere? They came to Muslim lands. And what happened in return? It wasn't Palestinians who had been slaughtering Jews. Yet, when people go to protests on a weekly basis in central London, they're treated like they're the anti-Semites. They're the ones who are making Jews feel scared and intimidated across the world. What did the Palestinians ever do to deserve this inhumane injustice that's taking place? We could talk about Gaza much more and we should do. But what I want to emphasize again is the challenges that we face here. Because the, traje the trajectory which we are on now, Muslims who go and publicly speak in the defense of not just Palestine but Islam, are literally facing severe hardships. They're being canceled. They're being character assassinated. Their careers are put on the line. And even people in government 
are using this stick to attack Muslims. And do you know why? It's because they're scared. It's because they know that Islam is a winning formula. They don't understand how even though Muslims are killed in large numbers, oppressed, uh, occupied, and have been for many decades, Islam continues to grow. It continues to be well on track to becoming the largest religion on the planet. They don't understand why. Well, I can tell you why. It's pretty straightforward. It's a winning formula. It's a winner's religion. We're on the winning team. And of course, we are given the rules by the divine. That's why. And they can't understand it. But what I want to... Em but what I want to emphasize today is that we have to toughen up. We have to prepare ourselves because a storm is coming. It's already here. We have to be prepared to face the consequences of standing up for what's right. And unfortunately, Muslims are the biggest victims of cancel culture and the culture war which exists today. You hear complaints from the left. You hear complaints from the right. They're canceling me. This woke agenda, this and that, I don't know what else. The reality is they are all gunning for Muslims. We are the real and only genuine victims of cancel culture. And it's going to levels which I fear are going to see people, who knows, frog marched to concentration camps in the future. Inshallah not, we don't know. But we have to educate ourselves, be strong of mind, make sure that we are not colonized of the mind, a concept which uh, Malcolm X would have spoken about in his day. And if, if only he were here today, he would be disgusted and appalled by the state of many Muslims in the West, those who have been willing to compromise on key aspects of Islam because they don't want to upset the non-Muslim crowd. They want to do interfaith work. They want to further their own agendas in the Labour Party or whatever else it is. So let's prepare. Let's prepare to hit back. Let's prepare to defend ourselves. Let's prepare to strengthen our understanding of our religion and be prepared to defend those key aspects of Islam. And I'm not talking about a Tommy Robinson style, you know, radical effort on the street. I'm not talking about the woke style of going up to people who disagree with Islam and screaming in their face. I'm talking about understanding Islam, which many of us already do, but being able to defend unapologetically those beliefs which we hold so dear. We cannot give any ground on these issues. And I'm not just talking about Palestine solidarity, I'm talking about Islam. Why should anyone look down their nose at you because you practice Sharia? You know, they were talking about recently on social media, I think it was Nigel Farage and other right-wing fruitcakes and lunatics of that nature, they were warning about the possibility of an Islamist being elected to parliament in 2029, something along, those na something along those lines. An Islamist, I don't even know what they mean by Islamist. Am I an Islamist? I mean, I, I practice Islam, I love Islam, so I guess that makes me an Islamist. Are they talking about Al-Qaeda? I don't know. It's an undefined term that they throw around at any Muslim they don't seem to like. Well, if they are talking about religious Muslims, like me or you or anyone else, if, if that's what Islamism is, then I say, why not? Why not get a proper Muslim elected? Why not rally behind a candidate who can actually defend us for once? Not like these sellout, compromising, liberal, lefty, loser, so-called self-described Muslims like Sadiq Khan, who gets criticized by Muslims more than anyone else does. I'm talking about why not? If someone believes in Islam and gets into office and is willing to defend us, good. I say more Islam here. And I'm not talking about creeping Sharia. I'm talking about someone who gets elected and does a good job because if this country is left to its own devices, it will never stand up for the truth. It will never stand up for justice. It will never stand against genocide. It will continue to support it and continue to attack and criminalize those like us good, ordinary, everyday Muslims for doing the right thing. So on that note, uh, I just want to say that uh, obviously uh, we live in times now where there are luckily Muslim groups in this country who do do good work, CAGE, 
uh, five pillars, obviously, uh, if I do say so myself, uh, and others who are fighting for our rights, but we don't know where it's going to go. So whilst you have those organizations available, do support them, do support them, especially with the Holy Month coming up. A lot of our attention goes towards giving charity, towards good causes, and good, inshallah, I pray that you have the means of continuing to support those causes. But don't forget the Muslim journalists. Don't forget the Muslim activist groups out there. They need your support as well. And you may find now more than ever, these groups are as important as they've ever been before, as the mainstream of this country continues to come after us and attack us and attempt to criminalize us just for believing in the one true religion, the perfect religion, and that is Islam. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair.